Hi everybody, so they've gone and done it again. Um, interest rates have gone up from 0.75 to 1%. Um, there are some real implications with these changes that are happening uh, almost now on a, you know, uh, on a regular basis and I think they will continue. Um, certainly there's a lot of consensus out there that interest rates, even by the Chancellor himself that came out last, last week I think, said you know interest rates are going to rise. Um, there's a lot of consensus that it's going to be around the 2 to 2.5% by next year so you know a lot of those people that have got current mortgages uh, or are going for mortgages they've got to be expecting this so if the interest rates are you know at uh, I don't know two two and a bit next year the actual product rates that you're going to get is probably going to be about I don't know a percent higher I would say at least so you've got to be warned you know you've got to watch out for that that's going to happen so what is it doing to this market right now what is it doing to these people that are looking to buy houses and come doing remortgages and all sorts well it's causing turmoil because basically the quote say you go you approach a broker like me i give you the best quote in the market say you go and you know it might take you a couple of weeks or a month or two months or three months or whatever it is uh, for you to find the property and by the time you come back it's a completely different quote if I'm doing my job correctly I have to research the market again run the affordability again and then say right you know we did give you this lender however this lender's rates is now this there are other lenders out there however this lender's changed their affordability I'll give you a live case and this is something I had to deal with and it pretty much took me the afternoon yesterday on one of our clients cases and this is a live case like I said um, Client came to me a couple of months ago. Um, he, could, he could make a comment on this if he wanted to, but um, he came to me a couple of months ago, and we got him a mortgage. Right, got him a mortgage, got him a mortgage offer. Job done, everything sorted out. Offer's been issued. Um, last week he came back to us and said, "You know what? I've negotiated down the the price following a survey, so I'm now going to buy the property for six thousand pounds less." I said, "Okay, well that's a material change. That means it's got to go back into the lender. The lender has to produce a new offer for you and assess things, and then come back out again." He said, "Fine, no problem. Um, we've gone in, and uh, the lender's done the assessment, and." Lenders come back and say, we totally understand that he's borrowing less, however, and we totally understand it's going to be the same rate, we're not going to change the rate, but our affordability model has changed since three months ago. So, um, yeah, sure, we'll give you your offer, but the client can only borrow £10,000 less. And we were like, what? £10,000 less than the £6,000 that we wanted. And we were going, well, hang on a minute. Uh, no, 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 can we just keep it as what it is? And they said, no, actually, this, it's a material change. So, um, basically, uh, in, th in the space of three months, um, that affordability has dropped between, I don't know, ten to £16,000. That client can borrow less. Um, so, we had to sort of get into it, speak to the business development manager. I had to get involved. I had to get involved with the actual direct underwriter and come up with a plan. We moved things around. Luckily, there was some room in there because the client's age, so we could stretch the term of the mortgage. Obviously, I had to have a discussion with the client, tell them the situation, tell them what it means, explain to them what the stretching of the term means. Uh, obviously, you'll be pay paying the money over a longer period, but these are the these are the implications that are happening on a real-life event. So we decided by stretching the term of the mortgage by two years, and we could potentially um, get to where he wanted to, or the, the figure that he could live with. However, that's not always going to be the case for everybody, and, and that's why there was a lot of dialogue between, I think it was a couple of phone calls between us, me and the underwriter had to work and, and rejig the system, the business development manager had to get involved. So that's on one case, okay? And you can imagine, there are lots and lots of cases going on at the moment. There are applicants that are going in at this rate and coming out at another rate because, oh, by the way, when, I, when you got me the agreement in principle, the rate was this. Now I found the property, you're telling me the rate is that. Well, actually, it's just because it's not us because the market has changed and, and you're going to see a lot of this as rates start increasing. We've actually seen, and also there's turmoil within the lenders. Lenders are withdrawing rates frantically now. Now we've had the interest rate. Lenders are going to be withdrawing their rates and they're going to come in with new rates, okay? We've actually seen a lender, uh, a lender called a buy-to-let lender, a digital lender called Molo Mortgages. Now, uh, last week, there were reports that Molo Mortgages has ceased accepting new buy-to-let applications, okay? Sourcing 
the cost of funds being one of the problems. So securing the money so they can lend it out because they're not your traditional bank. They sort of source their money and then they lend it out. Um, they said that basically that cost of funds has got expensive. So, you know, there is going to be problems in the market. Now, I'm not saying the market's going to close. That's not the issue. In fact, the market will eventually get better because as investors see a greater return in interest rate because they're actually making money, um, they'll probably invest more. But th there are problems that we're going to see. And uh, you know, we've seen the, uh, the the Fed raise interest rates only yesterday. We saw somebody out of the committee here. I read that um, most of the people have voted for this, obviously, uh, and there there will be you know there there will be increases going forward. So, what can we do about it? Well, if you're going for a remortgage, bear that in mind. You know, if you're looking at two-year fixes, maybe look at three, maybe look at five. Find out where you think you're going to be in two years time yourself your finances where your situation is if you're expecting a kid what are you going to do with it is there going to be nursery costs they're going to be so you know it's thinking long term rather than oh i can i can afford it now i'll go and buy myself a bmw a brand new bmw because i can afford it now and i've got an extra 500 pounds a month well that 500 pounds a month might turn into 200 pounds a month so um bear it in mind these interest rate changes are going to come down the line there is more i mean i did a i did a video probably about six seven months ago right probably too soon say look interest rates are going to go up guys watch out okay um, i'm not an economist but i just this is the market and you know it's it, when the chancellor turns around last week and said you know what i think interest rates are going to go up and uh, you know the the bank of england of you know when you look at the, the the actual how they're voting and what they're doing and what globally what's happening and this is just trying to stem the the, the problems in regards to inflation guys Everybody who's, who pays a gas bill on the electricity bill will know what's what, what we're what we're dealing with and petrol prices and stuff and all of that is going through inflation. Inflation, I don't know what figures they're they're quoting, but I know well, I'm paying for things. Everything's a lot more expensive. Just go and buy yourself a, you know, try to do some building work and then you'll find out how expensive things are. So um, watch out. This is this is coming down the line. Um, be prepared to speak to a professional, speak to your mortgage brokers, independent mortgage brokers. This is why they're great, okay? This is why we're great, okay? Independent mortgage brokers, hopefully they've got access to the whole of the market, like Niche Advice, and you can look at things holistically. You can not only just look at the rate, you can look at affordability, you can look at what are the trends with the different lenders, you can look at the product types, you can look at, um, I'll give you a very good example, right? Um, one one thing you can look at is say you are not confident about your earnings three four years down the line right you could go with a lender that's got a relatively simple product transfer policy now just because they've got it now doesn't mean they've got it in the future however what that means is when your rate runs out you don't have to necessarily run through everything with them again you could just switch your product with them okay and that's a big reassurance okay if the world changes okay and you think your income's going to go low because you're having two, you're having triplets, okay? Or, or you, you know, you think your life, you might be looking to go self-employed and your situation is going to change. Those things, if you have a discussion with a mortgage broker, I can pretty much guarantee you that mortgage broker will put their hat on and go, right, okay, if this is going to come down the line, say in three years' time, okay, what is the best option for you, not just for now, but in three years' time, it might be worth you paying a little bit more now to have the security going forward, okay? So, and sp and when you're dealing with buy to let, you definitely need to speak to somebody because there are so many little options. No, yes, you can go five-year fixed all the way along, but, you know, you might need access to capital. So, why don't you go for a five-year fix with a three-year tie-in? You know, tracker rates are going to start becoming more and more uh, attractive. So rates that don't have early repayment charges, offset rates, all of a sudden offsets going to come in. Okay. I haven't talked about offsets, offsets for a long time. Offset is where you've got an interest, you're paying into a savings account and that, could, that the, the savings, the interest rate on the savings can go towards the mortgage. We can reduce the mortgage balance or reduce the term of the mortgage. So there are different types of products that come into play now where, as interest rates start hiking up. And it's, and it's a duty of us as brokers to give you that information, but you to also highlight some of the key bits. There's no point just filling in a form and not speaking to the broker because those are the things that make a difference later on. Uh, I'll catch you on the, on the next one, guys. Hope everybody's well. And if you did like and subscribe, please share. Please share this information because it can really help others. Take care. All the best. 
The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.